Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Uh, we are here to talk about Star Trek Discovery. I am Matt, that is Jacqueline and Kim and Jason. Uh, latest episode tells us one important thing. The show doesn't suck that much. It does. <laughs> It got Number better. two, you can get an official disco t-shirt. Yeah, that's true. I saw that for I kind of thought that was yeah. awesome. I'm disappointed that the shirts did not say very on the back. Dis mm. Very disco? Yeah. Discovery? Disco is oh. very right? Yeah. So does that mean that the Enterprise staff <laughs> oh has shirts God. that say enter, enter and then prize? Uh, probably. Oh. All right. So, oh. Matt, I was going to go on the record and say, I'm officially an idiot because I thought they were just wearing disco shirts. Like they were just oh, being, yeah. it took me a minute. I was like, right. disco. Oh, discovery. It took me a solid week because yeah. I saw it on for sale online and I'm right. like, what? And then later. I think they're trying to push away from the STD, which how they didn't realize that, that was the unfortunate acronym oh, of the show yeah. is beyond me. Mm, right. <laughs> disco STD. Yeah. So I, thought they were, I thought they were having like, you know, a cool moment. Like back on earth, they would wear these disco shirts in like 95. <laughs> Let's just bring that back. You know, what's old is new again. Right, but I wouldn't. You know, those Michael plain Burnham black shirts with right. white text that says yeah, disco. disco. Those are so trendy. Oh and Tilly would wear one of those, but I wouldn't buy that Michael would wear a disco shirt. No, secretly yeah. see where, again. This She's revealing. Look. We were finding out that Michael likes disco. <laughs> Speaking of Tilly, I feel like this episode finally got the right amount of Tilly. Yes. Like they got the like, like I guess the subtle nuance of Tilly down pat. Just enough not to make me want to wring her throat. Week. Yeah, this week was a right amount of Tilly, not Computer, too much. Computer, add salsa. Yeah. It was cute. It was it was a nice. I said cute. It was it was, it cute. was cute. I mean, Tilly uh, is cute, no, right? Yeah. But she she was lovable, and I like the camaraderie and the relationship those two have. They're the complete antithesis of each other, mm -hmm. and that plays to the opposites attract. Because I feel that Burnham's more of um, a bigger sister to Tilly, mm -hmm. the bigger blacker sister. <laughs> to yeah. Tilly, you know, yeah, um, she did a better job with that relationship this week too. Because sometimes Burnham beats her up, and they kind of pulled that back this yeah. episode, where they were like, "Let me be a mentor without breaking you down." Sure. The running around the Discovery reminded me a lot of Battlestar Galactica yeah. when Starbuck used to run around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I they wonder if that was on purpose. Yeah. They could have had um, Michael run a little bit more natural. Her yes. run was like. It was a Vulcan. <laughs> I guess they're trying to give her a Vulcan run. The Vulcan Because that's the way the Vulcans okay, run. Okay, like, that's the yeah, most logical yeah, way. To yeah, run. yeah, that is. And it's, it's got, Spock runs that same way. And like all of like, even the new Spock. He, remember that scene in oh, Into Darkness yeah. where he's just like, oh, chasing. Yeah, yeah. chasing a Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> with no real movement, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I like a joke in there about yeah. that being what the Thetans taught Tom Cruise, and that's oh, why yeah. you run that way. Oh, that's why no one naturally runs that way. I mean, if they right. and if they had to hire a choreographer for that scene to teach her to run that way, that was what you call a serious monumental volcanic fail because <laughs> I was so uncomfortable watching. But this episode wasn't uncomfortable watching. No, it was much better. So I, it answered yeah. a major question that's been persisting around <clears throat> uh, Star Trek, which is why did Sarek and Spock not talk for 18 years? Yeah. Right, now we know yes, why. Now, now we know, we know. why, right. yeah. And and I really like they're sewing up some of the the threads that this whole plot device of Sarek and Michael Burnham had, where I'm like, okay, it's Star Trek plausible at least. I'm not saying that this is the greatest like explanation of why he had this like adopted black child that no one talked about, but it, it's a little bit more plausible. Yeah, and I feel like this episode also open the door to see a little bit more emotion out of Michael than yes, we previously sure. seen, right? Because we've Great seen her man. try and be the Vulcan super logical and she only kind of lets out emotion when she can't help it. And this one, you know, it ends with her saying, yeah, okay, so I've got all these conflicting emotions. And yeah, that's, that's and yeah, I was just saying this to Jason, actually, we were walking in, I was like, this is where they need to put her. Like, cause Spock was even like this towards the end, maybe not at the beginning, but his friendship with Jim Kirk led him to be a person that said, yes, I'm a logical Vulcan, but at some point, letting my emotions take over is actually made me a better Starfleet officer. And I think, this is an episode where Michael Burnham showed that part of her, where she wasn't someone that just try to be emotional, emotional, emotional and do something stupid. Try to be logical, 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 do something stupid. She played in both places and owned it yeah. and made it great. And again, um, I hate to say it, but Sarek saved her again, both as a character in the show, because now she's at least likable, mm -hmm. and also um, has he physically saved I her. I like Sarek. Yeah. He's one of, I, I get happy when I see that he's gonna be in the show. Like on the <laughs> thumbnail, I went, yes. yes. And but that's James Frain, right? Yes, yes, James Frain, and he, like it cannot be said, I have to stress this, I love Sonequa, but what he brings to her character yeah. 
is like, because what were you saying like last week about how much we were just like, oh, she's like the worst, you right, know what Cassandra, I mean? Cassandra. Right? Yeah, exactly. And this one, she, us, yeah. she wasn't in that role this time, no. which was great. People actually listened to her. Yes, mm -hmm. and, right? and it made it worth it. Like I really enjoyed watching her this I week. I feel like we like this show now because for the this was a good episode. This was a good episode. There are bad episodes and right. good ones. But, I, but one. I told you guys that this was going to happen. It was a slow burn. We had to just like hop along and just go along for the ride. But isn't that more frustrating that it's like if you compare last week's episode to this one, where I was literally like I could be doing laundry, to this episode where I was really into it, mm -hmm. actually wanted to go back and rewatch parts of it. Like that's frustrating as a fan because you can't sit week to week and be like that kind of happy. But that's, but I feel like that's the ebb and flow of of what shows do. You're gonna have those really standout episodes that make you that that just that elicit this really deep visceral response of happiness and of, of completion, and you're gonna have throwaway episodes. You know, mm -hmm. that's just and this and this was the bar shouldn't be that low. The throwaway episode shouldn't be like last week where I was so angry at it. Yeah, I agree. There were this one is not a throwaway because it really reveals some stuff. Now, one thing I'll lead with the one thing that bothered me a little bit: the 180 from Stamets is. What is wrong with him? I mean, that I guess he's tripping on he got, mushrooms. He got that free willy juice right. up in him. I'm <laughs> saying, man. He's, <laughs> he's tripping on mushrooms. He was just yeah. like going, "Hey, that's groovy," and I was like, "Who the hell it's is like, this?" Once you get over the needles, like. So, yeah, so that experiment is changing his personality. I guess forever or just for now. I mean, I think I hope it's for now because I think they very much are making this as a, a plot device that we'll use later. That maybe he's got some of that juice in him because whatever he experimented <gasps> on himself. Juice? Yeah, <laughs> it's the free willy juice. <laughs> right, it's he injected himself with the spores. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And again, so, like, AKA I'll play my free my, willy juice. <laughs> right, so mean. Right, I, I'll hit my joke again <laughs> so the people at home get it. He's tripping on mushrooms. Yeah, that's why he's so. Yeah, mushrooms. exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Right? Thank you yeah, for joining no, the show. I, okay. I agreed. But I was with you. I just was uh, like, okay. I, get I know. It. I just had to keep hitting my, it until my, it gets acknowledged. My drug addled days are a little bit over, so it took me a minute to remember. Oh yeah, mushrooms. Like these are spores. Mushrooms. I thought yeah. they were mirror universe. Wasn't that the theory we were going I off of? Don't know. Maybe it's a with or all maybe the mirror staring going on. Or maybe on. yeah, Lorca maybe it is this it. week. For someone who's not a, a, a avid Star Trek fan, I really found it fascinating the way they described humans, the way they would say not quite human, or and how they're this the assimilation and the blending of human and and Vulcan, Vulcan yeah. right. and Vulcan um, uh, races is super controversial. I wasn't aware of that, and, and yeah. when we went back to the flashback of when Michael was transported violently back to a time before, it was really eye opening for me because I always thought that the Vulcans. Uh, were friendly to humans and had a, had an affinity towards humans, but I didn't know there was a disdain as well. I mean, it's affinity in this sort of like the same way you're like, oh, I like my neighbors, but I don't necessarily want them to come into my family. And like, and again, Spock has always had that um, that that whole idea of him choosing to go to Starfleet because he wasn't necessarily universally accepted in Vulcan culture, even though he becomes an ambassador and, and a very much a figurehead in it later. In his youth, he was kind of like a black sheep. And yeah. then we find out Michael literally is another. And yeah, it's really, I think it's really interesting watching Sarek's choice because I honestly do feel he, he chose Spock not necessarily even because he thought Spock was the better choice, but because that was- son. That, no, no, no. I think it was because that was the only logical choice that would have them not questioning him. That if he would have put really? Michael up, like just hear me out on this. Okay. If he would have put okay. Michael up, because he, he's, a, he's a logical enough man to probably guess that Spock might have done something rebellious like he did, right? If he put Michael up, they would say that's not the logical choice. You're acting out of emotion. Like they would never accept that choice. Oh, because they were already questioning right, him. Because for yes, Spock has yes. some Vulcan. 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 So why would you why would huh. you choose the human? Like they're both if they're both equally non-Vulcan, the one that is half Vulcan is obviously going to be the better of the two for this choice. As the reason why we're telling you you can't do it is they're non-Vulcan. Right. Okay. And so to me, it was even more heartbreaking to look at it that way because then it says to me, oh. Oh, well, we can't have this guy. Like, like, right. like he knew he could never put her up based off of that tenement. But do you agree with him telling her or lying to her about why she was rejected? 
Did I he mean, do that to protect, you know, the the logical tenant of Vulcans or did he do it because he was embarrassed? Or? I think it was a little bit of both. I think it has to do with the fact that like he said, when Spock chose what Spock chose, he couldn't tell her. Like I again, I think he did go back to logic. He mm-hmm. only time he got into emotion was when that guy said what he said and he was just like, you have to make the choice, so pick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's like selfish choice. <laughs> so exactly. Like, like, <laughs> and then he like he got emotional about it. I, I loved that scene. Yeah, by the way. and I, I love so it great. was a good scene. And I keep bringing it up. James Freen is so good in this role. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really. I mean, Mark Lennard had played Sarek back in the old show and in some of the movies, but this is such a great portrayal. And I'm a big fan of James Freen, and he's really good in this. A um, couple other things we should talk about. We'll talk. We'll get to our theory. <gasps> the theory. But yeah. before that. We're gonna talk about Lorca. I was just gonna bring yeah. up Lorca. That was, oh. yeah. He's he's lost it. Well, uh, first of all, Captain got some play. Can we talk about which that? Was, uh, which was yeah, okay. <laughs> it was really like, oh, she's rejecting him. Oh, she's accepting him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the whole the whole exchange from her questioning him to him being like, hey, baby, you want a drink? And then they're then they're rolling around the sack together. It was kind of like, ah, all right, cool. But they have history. I know. But they, I didn't see, but right. See, the minute she showed up, I was already counting down the moments till we got to see her in his room. I didn't. I, I, see, was, I was not. I was. I just. I, didn't I saw that right away. Either. Me neither. I thought they were friends and had a mutual respect naturally of course but i didn't think that there was any kind of like a uh Fizzle or any I mean, I kind, of, watched, kind of fire I going on. Too many like Star I, Trek, TNG, and original series. Like they're they're always trying to like. It was Riker on TNG that was just sticking in everything that came along. But <laughs> I feel like Lorca is the I guy mean, come in on. this one. Kirk, Kirk too. Kirk was but the I mean, one to boldly go. Yes, where Kirk was the first anyone one. Had gone before. But then in the TNG, it was Riker. Riker was getting tons of play, and, and it mean, wasn't so much beard. Picard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he became the sexy sailor, and then some. And I feel like. I was ready for it with Lorca because I knew it was not going to be Burnham. No, and so I was like, and I I didn't feel like the like the the Stamets and his that's like a couple. They're so in a relationship yeah. that's different. Yeah, boring. Yeah, so I'm couples, like, existing couples, boring. No, they're like, not. They're, 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 but they're cute though. They're not that boring. I will say that um, the thing about Lorca that. I I'm glad that they're making the vulnerability. Yeah. Him being not as in control, him kind of groveling for his existence at mm-hmm. the end because he said this is all he has. You know, discovery is all he has. So that it was nice to see a more vulnerable and more revealing and a, and a kind of a not so badass Lorca as opposed to in, in 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 contrast with how he normally is. I didn't like it. I was literally like, "Oh man, you just sealed your fate." When he started begging like that, because right. I feel that either she's not going to respect that, she's not going to respect it, or that means <laughs> that because isn't that always the scene of the villain where it's like, "Don't do it, don't do it," and then they shoot somebody, and then when we get that last shot, obviously that makes more sense. But it sets up, but it sets up, of course, Lorca to be and to go even off the deeper end, which I'm all for a, a for a crazy shit show on a show. And let's like, talk about Jason Isaac. Is he not just chewing the, uh, the scenery? Yeah, but he's, and I love it. I love, I love it. it. It's, it's so, so good. Much. But then when he sends the admiral, like, oh yeah, well, Sarek was supposed to go on this mission. But the well, admiral is so good, we should send her. Yeah. Right. It was like the minute they said that so Sarek well couldn't projected. do that. I was like, oh no. And then Saru's face when she gets captured by the Klingons, because again, I feel like this episode had the right amount of Klingons, which was none. None. Praise <laughs> um, it. Praise. Totally. Yes. Or praise did it. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get but wait, to that. But, but anyway, so it turns out that uh, Sarek's mission was a trap um, for, for Cole and. and, and See, Admiral Akbar would have told him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They trapped the Admiral. That's just awful to say. But. She gets captured, and obviously she's gonna go um, get kidnapped. And then Lorca is like, "No, I think we're gonna contact Star a Starfleet and get their advice." And then Saru's just like, "What? What? Wait, who are you? Who and are what you? Have you done with Lorca? Why would you not?" To be the right. most extreme possible. Yeah. We're not saddling up right now. Yeah, he, and then he was waiting for it. He was like, "We always like saddle up immediately. Let's yeah. go." And he was just like, "No, I'm gonna play this one up by the book." And <laughs> everyone was like, "Oh, you are so <laughs> right. just ready." To I mean, it was short of Saru coming in and saying, "Captain, I've already plotted a course. We're already en route." Right? Yeah. Uh, just knowing, just, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Turn that off. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay, so let's get to the theory. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so theory crafting. Love seeing. I do want to say that we're going to see Lorca go even farther on the deep end because we've got this crazy Ahab character, right? Like, that's awesome. Let's talk about Ash. Yeah. All right, let's take a vote. So, there's a popular theory going around um, 
that Ash is not only secretly a Klingon, but that he's Loke. Wait, what was his name? Volk. Volk. See, now I hadn't caught on that. I had just thought, as I was watching her, I thought, but do oh, you he's remember a Klingon. when Laurel was talking to him and she said, You're gonna lose everything. You're gonna go to this house of deception and lies. And then we haven't heard from them since then. Mm. Right, so Volk may be. See, Ash. I just take it more of a possible Klingon Trojan horse. Right, me too. Like it doesn't necessarily mean So just a Klingon. Or just a Trojan horse. Like maybe they you know, st uh, you know, what is it, uh Stockholm syndrome. Like mm -hmm. after years of abuse he's okay. turned to the other side you and know, now he's like, you know, maybe it's a bit very ash convenient. Colored. Oh I'm not saying that like I would put it as like wh what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, you know, what? Remember Volk's kinda ashy? <laughs> oh, no, no. You on. and your puns. I'm, sorry. Sorry. I'm just gonna sorry. go say ashy. Sorry. Like, sorry. like the that ashy. I'll let you have a few, but I'm this sorry. is a little bit much, Matt. So just <laughs> be, I don't want I want Ash to be. When they say that, I'm gonna laugh. When they say that, that's why he told that name. He took that name. Um, before we move off of Ash, I think your theory is not wrong. I think we all agree that there's something there to it. It's just how far do you? Is it the hologram imagery projection? Is he literally like? Well, why can't he before, be? Haven't yeah. They, haven't See, they done some kind of biological? So right. So but so since this show is in the main continuity, mm -hmm. in. Enterprise, they mm -hmm. established that there were eugenics that so, that Dr. Sung had done that affected a group of Klingons that made them look human. I think some Starfleet members have also done something to look Romulan, but I forget yes. exactly what. Yeah, it was. there was. Yeah. I think that was that. Well, they did that in one of the original episodes. Yeah, the original show episodes where. And uh, I don't think it was just makeup. No, right. No, they, but, they also did it in. But they've Kirk also done with was had the ears yeah. and everything. Uh, yeah. but so we've established. So the show has established that Klingons and trouble with Tribbles has a what looks like a human that turns out to be a Klingon, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have the darker complexion and yeah. not the uniform and not the goatee. And you know, I was a little bit wondering in the first episode or the first, the set maybe was it the the very first or the second episode after the pilot why Lorca had a. Tribble. Mm -hmm. So here's how to tell if the theory about Ash is a Klingon is correct. If that Tribble ends up dead, it's because Ash killed it because Tribbles hate Klingons and they shriek in alarm. Mm. So watch that Tribble. So watch that Tribble. Um, Speaking of Ash, though, um, we just went down the Tribble. Yeah, we went down the Tribble hole. Um, love in, I, I feel. The, yeah, the they're going to bang. They're yeah. going to bang. And, and that's I'm why I don't want it. him to be a Benedict Arnold. I don't want him to be a Trojan horse. Oh, I don't want him to be. It's going to make it even better no. because then people are going to suspect Betrayal. her that she's in on I, it. I, and I get, I like, get where, I get where the story can go without giving that extra. Mm. That is just what you wanted, though. Right, but you okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> For dear life. Okay, um, okay. But it's because the exchange between Ash and Michael in that one scene at the end was very, was, was great. It was another one of those. I'm not going to say an aha moment because they laughed at me in the comments and said, how dare he refer to Oprah on Star Trek? So my bad. But I, I, I think I want, I want him to be a good guy for her. I get how interesting it would be for him to be a villain in cahoots with the, the heroine of the show. But in an attempt to make Michael a happier person, I guess. That I think, ain't gonna happen. Uh, they I, have that, already set this up. In fact, it's gonna be even worse. Yeah. Because here's what's gonna happen. Am I crazy Probably. wanting that? No, She's you're not no, crazy but, wanting it. It's just the show has not put her on I, that path. And I think you know where I'm going with this. By the end of this show, by the end of this season, I suspect the mutineer is going to have to mutiny again because her captain is crazy. Yeah. And she's gonna be given the choice to mutiny because she realizes that the captain is crazy and maybe she doesn't. And that'll be the problem. And that'll be a problem. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Because remember, the other dynamic that we didn't really go into is Lork has also adopted Ash in his right. little like you know, crazy Ahab, uh, Ahab way. So Ahab, Ahab way. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, they're they're trying to like. I guess mirror them with each other. So Michael has to do something different, whatever he does. Yeah, but the fact that he's like, "Hey, I'm going to make you my security officer." That really, was fast. Yeah, that was too I mean, fast. and so it is a little bit of that like instant, um, instant like, I'm bringing you into the fold type thing. And whenever that happens, you know that that's going to have probably bad ramifications. But much better episode. 
Um, it's still a frustrating show because as happy as I was watching this episode, I'm like, what are we gonna eat next week? It's like the chef that can't give you a consistent meal. Did you see meal. the preview for next week? I did it yet. looks crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but. <laughs> and Jacqueline, I agree with you. The less Klingons, the better. That's Those are the only scenes in the show I actually like fast forward to. I go on Instagram, <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Because like they just, I feel like they don't add anything. You know, no. their their whole existence. The show could be you could just refer to the Klingons and have them be in the background without even showing them on the show, and that would be good enough for me. Or they just should have brought them in later. Like it's it's there if they're expected to be a villain, I get it. But it would have been better storytelling, in my opinion, to just have a slowly reveal to why they're doing what they're doing. Like to just shove us into their story. I don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. I liked Amanda. Yeah, yeah. we liked Amanda. <laughs> yes. Like Out of all the names Amanda. they could give that's, people. That's been her Spock's name for wife. decades. No, I know, I'm just saying, like Mother. Amanda. Mother, right, yeah. sorry, Spock's And the Alice Mother. in Wonderland book, yeah. we're sorry, wondering sorry. why she was, why she, in the first episode, why she was down, right. down the rabbit hole for Alice in Wonderland. We saw the reference to the book in this episode yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, so this was a good episode. We like this one. Let's hope they keep it up and it keeps going up from here. We'll be back next week, maybe to praise it, maybe to complain some more, uh, but we'll be back. Thank you. No, <laughs> <laughs>